the work that I'm showing here with my sister Christine is called the Crochet Coral Reef Project. And basically, it's based on mathematics. All the frilly curly shapes that we make are actual representations of what's called hyperbolic geometry. And they look very much like sea creatures, coral reef creatures, because real sea creatures make these hyperbolic structures. So it's this fantastic um, mixture of mathematics and feminine handicraft. And it's also referring to the fact that coral reefs are being wiped out by global warming. So we grew up in the state of Queensland, Australia, where the Great Barrier Reef is. And when we started the project, we literally joked that if the Great Barrier Reef ever died out due to global warming, our woolly one would be something to remember it by. 13 years ago, that was a joke, but now scientists are saying that could really happen. We were inspired to start the project because when we started in 2005 was when scientists were beginning to realise that coral reefs were having these massive bleaching events where the corals all go white. And it had been a mystery why, and it became clear that it was because the water, was, the water temperature was rising. So that was really the first sort of large-scale environmental sign that global warming was not just a future problem, but was a problem for humans now. And my sister and I had grown up in Queensland, and we felt very strongly that we wanted to do some sort of artistic response to this devastation of coral reefs but we also wanted to do a community project. So we started crocheting these coral reefs ourselves and we invited other people to do it with us. And soon there were people all over the world assisting in the project. So it's kind of a collective project as well. And that's interesting too, because it also emulates what corals do. So individual coral polyps are tiny little animals, only about this big, that have really no power by themselves but billions of them together build the Great Barrier Reef, which is the largest living thing on Earth and the first living thing you can see from outer space. So we sort of think of our project as like corals. It's, it's what lots and lots of people build together. My sister and I were taught to do handicrafts by our mother when we were young children. So we grew up doing knitting and sewing and making all of our own clothes. And so for us, handicrafts were just a part of life and of necessity. Now, of course, you know, it's much more expensive to knit a jumper than it is to buy one. But when we were children, it was um, people who made their home clothes did it by necessity. And that link to the history of domesticity and feminine work is extremely important to us to maintain with our project. We think of the project as art, and it, we believe that it deserves to be in art galleries. But at the same time, we do see it as craft, and even the old, more old-fashioned word, fancy work, because it is connected to a tradition that we learned from our mother, and she learned from her mother, and all the women in my family. And we want to keep that domestic relationship. In the central pavilion, um, there are other parts of the same project. So in our case, um, we're showing in both venues parts of the same work, the Crochet Coral Reef. But in the other venue, what there are going to be is these small vitrines, each of which we call a pod world. And it's like a little miniature coral universe with some of the most extraordinary pieces of crochet and handicraft that some of our most skilled contributors to the project have made. So in those little vitrines, there will be these exquisite beaded forms and really, really finely done crochet forms and some really finely done crochet plastic as well. Mm -hmm. 